Well, good morning, and welcome to worship here at Trinity. It's good to see all of you, and um, did you, I hope that you picked up, besides the bulletin, but also the communion pods at the doors when you came. If you didn't, here's a good time to run and get one, because we'll have communion later in the service. We have a baptism today of Walter, and so we look forward to that. Pastor Elizabeth is uh, somewhere in Iceland. And I just want you to know she did go to church today, so she is not taking a vacation from God. So know that. So she, uh, it was a beautiful church. It was a picture of it. So anyway, that's great. Um, the other announcements, most of them are in the bulletin. But just to let you know that after church here, besides Sunday school, will be... Uh, question and answer period about the uh, addition on the building, and I think that's going to be here in the sanctuary. So if you have questions about that or concerns, um, stick around, and, uh, and hopefully you'll get all your questions answered for that. <clears throat> and I think that's it for announcements, and now we'll have the call to worship. Our confession and forgiveness is found on page two of your bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sin to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us join together in the prayer of the day. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on the earth. Shape us into the willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson for today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 4 through 12. The reading is from the last four passages in Isaiah that are often called servant songs. Christians are probably most familiar with this servant song. In light of Christian faith, the servant's healing ministry and redemptive suffering are understood to be fulfilled in the life and death of Christ. <clears throat> now listen to the reading. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. <coughs> he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. 
Although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll read Psalm 91 responsibly, responsibly. <laughs> because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor is affliction come near you. For he will command his angels concerning you. On their hands they will bear you up. You will tread on the lion and the serpent. Those who love me, I will deliver. When they call to me, I will answer them. With a long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through 10. Using imagery from scripture and from Jewish worship practices, Jesus is presented as the great high priest who was obedient to God's saving plan. Through his suffering and death, he has become the source of eternal salvation. Now listen to the reading. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek, This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join in the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, Lord to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost, according to Mark, chapter 10, verse 35 through 45. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, the disciples asked Jesus to grant them seats of honor. 
Jesus responds by announcing that he and his followers will rule through self-giving service. Now the gospel. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to Jesus, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink you will drink and the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. Whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Almighty and gracious God, we give thanks for your word for us and that we can gather as a family of faith and we can share in your stories to us and share in worship. And we ask that you would open our hearts and minds to your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I don't know about you, but I learned uh, early on as a father that whenever my kids said something like James and John said that red flags went up. Dad, can I ask you a question? And usually I could almost automatically say no. I don't want to hear your questions. You're not getting ice cream. You're going to bed or something like that because it was usually something that they wanted me to do for them. You know, it's like at the dinner table, give me a glass of milk. What? Don't your legs work? You know, that kind of thing. And James and John, they're walking with Jesus and, and they, they start out, oh, kind of innocently. Teacher, we want you to do something for us, whatever we ask. And I think Jesus rolled his eyes and a red flag went up and he thought, well, this will be really good, but it's not happening. And so it was. We want to be great, James and John said. We want to sit at your right hand and your left. We want honor. We want respect. We want power, right? That's what they're looking for. Power. <laughs> yeah. And Jesus says, you boys don't have a clue. And, and we know that he said that because if we had read the few verses before this, what is Jesus? He just gets done telling them that he's going to be arrested. He's going to be tried. He's going to be rejected by the chief priests and everybody and their pet dog. And he's going to be crucified in order that he might save the world. That's what the Messiah is going to do. Jesus just gets done saying that to the disciples. And James and John come and say, hey, we want to be great. Do you ever think that? Do you ever hear that old maxim? 
as I think of this, it's uh, called, or it, it, it goes like this. People rise to the level of their incompetence. Let that one sink in. That always worries me. People rise to the level of their incompetence. Huh. That means we get, you know, we, we climb the ladder and we get to a certain point, and at that point we realize, whew, this job is too much for me. And so there we stay. If we're living in a political world or in a corporate world or things like that, we rise to our level of incompetence. Or as um, Harry Truman liked to say, Harry Truman said, uh, the world is run by average people. And there's nothing wrong with that. People who, who um, he, what he meant by that is people who probably didn't do the best in school, but they did okay. People who probably um, didn't seat, sit in seats of honor and didn't have uh, name tags that told everybody else how important they were, but people who did the work, people who were willing to serve and do things and get things done. That's what Harry Truman meant by that. The world is run by average people. Now we sit here today <clears throat> and um, we have a lot of opinions, right? <laughs> Everybody has opinions. You have yours. You all have different opinions about just about anything. We could throw out any kind of subject, and you would have an opinion about it. And I do too. And I'm right. <laughs> and, and you're right too, as, mu as well as you know it. We're all right, but we're, we don't all agree. We all like to think in some ways that um, that we should, we should speak for Jesus in the world, or we should do this, and others should follow us and do things. But the warning that Jesus gives the disciples is, it's a tough warning. Because when Jesus speaks of baptism here, he's speaking about God's ways the way God gets things done in the world. And the way that it happens is a reflection from our reading from Isaiah 53 today. The servant song. The one who gets things done, who makes sure everybody gets food, who serves them, who gets them their milk at the dinner table, who does all the things that nobody else wants to do. That's God's ways. That's what the servant does. And in the end, he gives up his life for the people. We look at, at Jesus. And, and now, you know, it, it's, it's always interesting to me in that we look at paintings of Jesus, you know, the, all through the years, and there's all these paintings, and he always, like if you go back um, not too far, Jesus always has a halo on his head, and, um, and there's, he's always, and everybody is kind of at his feet and all that, and looking adoringly at Jesus, and, and do you ever think, what does Jesus think about that? Do you ever think, do you think Jesus would want to be seen like that when we read this gospel text? Do you think that? I think as I read this gospel text and I think, well, what, what if, if Jesus were to paint a picture of himself, how would he do it? Say, let's look at the Lord's Supper, right? And there's Jesus in the middle, standing up. Everybody's a little lower than him. The one disciple's looking at him, and, and they're all kind of discussing. You know, and I think Jesus would think, ooh, they got that wrong. 
Because what does John say about Jesus in the Last Supper? John says Jesus took off his tunic, grabbed a towel and a bowl of water, and started kneeling and crawling around on the floor and washing everybody's feet. How come we don't see a picture of that? Do you ever wonder? Why don't we see a picture of that, of Jesus? Because that's what he was about. He was of service. When we read this letter in Hebrews about the order of Melchizedek, the whole point of, of, of this is that in the end, the sacrifice that the priest makes is Jesus. The closest we come to that is pictures of Jesus on the cross, giving his life for you and me. That Jesus is servant of all. And what Jesus calls us to be is servants of all as Christians. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, help us to take heart in the call that you have ushered to us. The call to be servants, the call to serve the world, to serve your creation, and to put ourselves not at the right or the left, but put ourselves in the basement doing the work that you have laid before us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. starting today my head is wet and I'm on my way Christ mark is on me it's on you too it says he loves me and he loves you too I've become in this day a saint of God. It really doesn't matter what roads I trod, wherever I go, God's been there too. God's love has touched me. And will carry me through. There are other saints who have said amen. They keep me faithful to my journey's end. Along the way, I want to be. The kind of person that God set free. We'll have the service of holy baptism for Walter Allen Whiskey at this time. So if you guys want to come up, I hope you all got an insert in your bulletin for the baptismal service. You can just like line up and face the congregation, please. God, who is rich in mercy and love, gives us a new birth into a living hope through holy baptism. The power of sin is to put to death in waters, and we are raised with Jesus Christ to new life. We are united with all the baptized in one body of Christ. 
anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and sent out in mission for life in the world. Who presents Walter for holy baptism? Walter's family and sponsors, will you raise and nurture Walter in, Christ, in the Christian faith? Will you faithfully bring Walter to worship and teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments? Will you place in his hands the Holy Bible, read it with him, and provide for his instruction in the Christian faith? Will you be an example by the way you live, that Walter may grow in faith and continue in the promises of his baptism? And with the whole church, let us confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We give thanks. <laughs> we give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that as Walter is washed in the waters of baptism, he may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And, um, can I take them? <laughs> Hi, Walter. Yeah. Yeah, can you give me a smile? Walter Allen Whiskey. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Here you go. I'll trade you. <laughs> so, let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through the water and the Holy Spirit, you have given Walter, daughters, and sons new birth. Wash them from sin, raise them to eternal life. Sustain Walter in the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Walter Allen Whiskey, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. I'll give them back. I'd like to keep them. <laughs> so. And I'll give this to you that it's Walter's baptismal candle so that his light would shine before others and they may see Walter's good works and glorify his Father in heaven. 
Through baptism, Walter has been received into into the household of God, entrusted with the good news of Jesus Christ, strengthened to serve by the holy and life-giving Spirit. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us as we give praise to God and bear God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And if you want to step forward, I got some things for you. You can blow the candle. <laughs> so and here's Walter's. I'll give that to you because she's holding Walter. And this is for you. And all of this stuff is also yours. So maybe, yeah, uh, you could help us out a little bit. Uh, here, you're not holding anything. There you go. Okay, thanks for coming up. So, the wall baptism. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Set us free from sin and death, nourished and by the word of truth. Holy One, for the gift of the church handed down through the ages and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry for all of our ministries and our vocations that we may do them in your grace and in your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Created one, for the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures, we praise you. Provide healing for the earth, so that waterfowl, reptiles, horses, dolphins, and all living things may flourish as you intend. Be with our farmers as they Bring in their harvest that will provide not only for us, but their animals and others food during our winter months. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy, suffering one for all who work toward peace and justice, who lead our nations of the world with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice to all who suffer from violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, and poverty, and homelessness, and create places of refuge for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful one, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, and soul, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or COVID, and all the struggles that that has brought upon not only our country, but the countries of the world, that you would be with our health care providers as they face down this pandemic. We also pray for members of our congregation who are in need of prayer. We pray for Carol Alstead, Paul Morkin, Jerry Warden, Danella Griffin, Carol Harvey, Carmona Wistie, Lori Jensen, Judy Robley, Sue Alseth, Lucas A.J. Wistie, Mary Amundsen, Sharon Johnson, Rachel Krensky, Shirley Gerard, Sandra Wenig, Mavis Johnsrud, Betty Johnson, Anna Bingham Uris, Sawyer Oaks, <coughs> and Jennifer Wedman. Sustaining one for all who volunteer in the vi- vitality of this congregation. We praise you and we ask that you give them strength of hope and faith as they do their work. We ask, O Lord, that Walter Whiskey would join us in doing work as he grows and matures in this home of faith. We pray for all of our our workers here, for our ushers, our volunteers, the people who serve in our kitchens, all of the people that make the ministry of Trinity work. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayers. 
Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And you can share the God's peace however you want. Our ministries continue in worship and care for each other and our community in the missional support of the church at large and in outreach to our neighbor. Any loose coins will be go to noisy offering. So, and the offering, there are containers for offering as you leave the church. Now, if you take your communion pod, On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to all to eat, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. And you can open up the bottom of your communion pod, take the wafer bread, and eat that. The body of Christ given for you. And after supper, Jesus took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. And if you take, turn your communion pot over and tear off that, these are a lot nicer than what we used to have. The blood of Christ poured out for you. Let us join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Celebration at our Savior's invitation. Press no more in spirit somber, clothed in stead in joy and wonder. For the Lord of all existence, putting off divine transcendence. Again in love to meet us with his very life to feed us. Lord, as round this feast we gather, fill our hearts with holy rapture. For this bread and cup of blessing are for us the sure possessing. Of your loving deed on Calvary, of your living self our victory, pledge of your unfailing presence, foretaste here of heavenly gladness. Lord, we share in this communion as one family of God's children. Reconcile through you, our brother, one in you with God our Father. Give 
give us grace to live for others, and serving all the friends and strangers, seeking justice, love, and mercy, till you come in final glory. Let us pray. Lord of life, the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into the feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And I'd like to just thank all the people that make this worship happen, and if you see them, give them a shout of thanks too for our ushers and for our commune people who set up our communion, for our acolytes, uh, for Rick and, uh, and Lee doing the sound and the projections of our worship so that people who can't join us here today can watch us on Facebook Live and, and hear us on the radio. And uh, Gary, who keeps our church ready for us, so when we come, it's all clean and ready to go. And uh, Ruth for reading and... Oh, have I run? I, I don't know. I think there's more, but I can't think of them right now because uh, I'm an average student, and uh, there's, where, there's where we're stuck. So thank them as you leave church today, and, and remember there's an answer session for our addition here today following our worship. Please stand for the blessing. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. In Holy Trinity, the Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serving the word, dwell, the, go in peace, the living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God. Presence is our mission here to show compassion, face and listening here to be your heart of mercy ever clear. Hallelujah! To be your presence is our mission goal. The poor and shelter homeless cold to be your hands of justice, right uphold. Hallelujah! To be your presence is our mission blessed to speak for all the broken and oppressed. To be your voice of hope, your love expressed. Hallelujah. We are your heart, to oh Christ, your hands and voice. To serve your people is our call and choice. In, in mission we the church rejoice. Hallelujah. Oh, or unless you're staying, maybe you're all staying for the session. That'd be great. So, we're going to take a few pictures before we start the session, if that's okay. You want to take a few pictures? Yeah.